I can't believe I bought a $60 sunscreen, but today will be the day where we review it. In today's video, I am reviewing the brand new Tatcha The Silk Sunscreen Hydrating Mineral Shield, a sunscreen that is an SPF of 50 PA++++. I bought this sunscreen the day that it released. I feel like, honestly, I feel like what happened is I had FOMO about not being able to buy the new Glow Recipe sunscreen, but let me tell you, I feel like it all worked out. I have not seen great reviews with the Glow Recipe, specifically for people that wear makeup. I've heard there's a bit of pilling, and that is the main reason why I put this one in my cart and immediately bought it. A lot of the reviewers were saying this is gorgeous with makeup. But dang y'all, there wasn't a single verified purchase. It was all people who got this product free to review, so I had my fingers crossed, I placed my order, I got this about a week ago and have been trying it since, and I either have the best news or the worst news. It is frankly terrible that this $60 sunscreen might just be the best mineral sunscreen I have ever tried. I just did my morning skincare routine over here, so I'm about to apply this, but I think really quickly before we do that, let's talk just a little bit about the basics here. So this is indeed a $60 for 1.7 fluid ounce luxury sunscreen. It's definitely a luxury product. I think that when the verified purchases start coming in, don't be surprised if you start seeing some one-star reviews from people who think the product is small. Here's something really interesting. If you can see this packaging here, look at how slim and sleek it is, and yet they're saying 1.7 fluid ounces. So 1.7 fluid ounces is the same as this e.l.f. Happy Hydration Cream. But I'm bringing up the packaging because I had a real hilarious story with this exact same order, actually. This was an order I placed together. The reason I decided to buy this Calorie lip gloss is because the reviewers made me so mad. <laughs> Not making this up, they made me so mad. There were so many people saying this is really tiny, which it is, the packaging is tiny. The product inside is 0.25 ounces, which is actually pretty big. I have lip glosses all over the place that are 0.1 fluid ounce. So it's big, it's in small packaging. And we want this. We want smaller packaging because it's better for the environment. This is why brands like Ole Henriksen actually have been really getting on my nerves because I see people in the review saying you get so much product with the uh, Banana Bright Serum. No you don't. It's just in gigantic wasteful packaging. That's more plastic in the trash. But anyway, I digress. I actually do like the packaging. Just know it is 1.7 fluid ounces. There's one more thing I really wanna make sure I express with this. With this being a $60 sunscreen, I truly think the best audience for this is anyone watching this right now who is not phased by that price point. If you are someone who is going, yeah, $60 for a sunscreen, that's no big deal. If it's a great sunscreen, I'll buy it. You are the right person to buy it. If you're somebody who is going to need to save up, be cautious about something. Do not try to, you know, save up for this as a splurge and then, uh, you know, stretch it out. Don't stretch out sunscreen. Always apply the quarter teaspoon recommendation so you reach that SPF on the packaging because as, we, as we've just talked about recently, if you apply half, you don't get an SPF of 25, you get closer to an SPF of seven. Funny quirk in the way my brain works, I'm not gonna do that. I will, I will have no problem applying the correct amount, but I know, I know what I will do. What I will do is uh, tell myself, no, today is just a waste of a good sunscreen. It's not a worthy enough day, so I will set it aside and use a dirt cheap sunscreen that I don't like as much. Any of you have the same quirk? I'm trying so hard to get over this because I have thrown away really expensive products that I loved, but I just told myself I had to wear it only on the right occasions, special occasions. I, I, I gotta quit doing this every day. Every day is a special occasion. And let me do this thing where I, I scoot over and I put the ingredients up on the screen. So we do have 10% zinc oxide as our active ingredient in this product. It does appear to be a, a fully fragrance-free product, but do check the plant ingredients, especially if you have sensitivities. Of course, this product is in the silk line, so unsurprisingly, we do have the silk ingredient. We also have some probiotic postbiotic ingredients. We have lactobacillus in here. We have some Saccharomyces ferment. 
I was surprised that it's made in USA because I feel like most of Tatcha's products are actually made in Japan, but yeah, this one is made in the USA, and I think that's enough of an intro. Do you want to go ahead and get to applying this? I like how long I stretched out our supposed intro. It's because I know what's coming. I, I know what's coming. Okay, so make sure you shake this product. And I'm going to give you a little tip as somebody who's been wearing this. Rather than do the two fingers at once, do one finger twice, okay? And I'm going to tell you why. It's because it is a very runny product. This will make it a lot easier to work with. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> See what I mean? But just watch this, just just watch. Just watch this application, y'all. Wow, Tatcha, you really outdid yourself for this one. So incredibly fast. It just disappears into your skin. Okay, so now I'm going in with the second one. Let me make sure I get my forehead a little better this time and then some of my neck down here. I'm gonna try my hardest to not cut this clip at all. So sorry if it drags on a little bit here, but I just want you to see that uh, it, it's such a fast application. This is so incredibly easy to work with. It just disappears into your skin and it feels so light. It is so lightweight that the first time I applied this, I was so sure it was an SPF of 30. You know how I've said SPF of 50 is hard to formulate. When I took it back out later through the day, I was going SPF 50. This is an SPF of 50? So as you can probably tell, it does lean towards being a more dewy finish, but I'm gonna say, I actually do think this will work on all skin types, largely because of how lightweight it is. I think if you have oily skin, you will still appreciate this feeling of this one. And if you do have dry skin, it will still flatter your skin type as well. What if instead of saying it's dewy, what if we go with the, the trend of dolphin skin? Look at me for I am but a dolphin. I mean, that's what's trendy right now, whether you have oily or dry skin, but as we all know, the trends in this world change faster than my hair color. Something else that is really intriguing to me about this sunscreen is that it does have a tint to it. You probably saw it's a little bit of a pinkish tint, and yet it really does disappear once it's applied to your skin. I think they uh, did a, a perfect job of figuring out how to neutralize the natural white color of zinc oxide with a tint that it just cancels it out, so to speak. So while I can't personally attest to whether this will work on deeper skin tones, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it would. Again, feel free to chime in if you have a deeper skin tone and you've tried it. And one more thing that is very important to me, how does this play with makeup? There are very few sunscreens in my collection that like my foundations. Very few, they typically call themselves a primer to make it more obvious. So often, I will put on a sunscreen and then go to put my foundation on, and it's like the two are, are middle school rivals. You can tell my foundation is over here going, no, I will not sit with her because she is a prep and I am a goth. You know what happens, it does the whole balling up, it just doesn't want to cooperate with that sunscreen. I have a video from yesterday that I will show you of applying my makeup over the top of this, treating this as if it were a primer too, and oh my goodness, Tatcha, it's, a, it's beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. How did they do it? It's also funny, if you are new to this channel, you might not know this, but I've been really hard on Tatcha in the past. I do have some holy grail, a holy grail that they discontinued. You know the pearl is discontinued in Moonlight? I am heartbroken. But in general, I am a lot more picky with expensive products. I feel like if you are going to sell $60 sunscreens, it better feel like it's worth that extra money. And here I am sitting here just unable to really critique this product. I'm really struggling with it. The best con that I have to share with you all is that concern over whether people will use enough product. Actually, on that note, there's one more really important thing I wanted to say, and that is if you have an FSA, remember that you may have to check with your insurance company, but you may actually be able to purchase products like this and get reimbursed. 
even from Sephora. And that's really all I have for this video. I think I, I went into this hoping that with all of the advancements in sunscreens, I was hoping it was a good one and it still exceeded my expectations. I wanted to actually get a good SPF 50 PA++++ that feels nice to use, that is fast to apply, that plays well with makeup, which felt like it was asking a lot. And uh, Tatcha did it. But yeah, that's it. My final thoughts on the silk sunscreen are it's frankly incredible. I hope this video is helpful as is always the case. Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comment section below. If you found today's video helpful, make sure to hit like and subscribe and I will see you all next time.